drive, but if you have your palms or something to wave, get them ready. We're going to keep our video on so we can at least feel connected as we participate in the most unusual palm parade we've ever done together. But this is our virtual palm parade and Neil is going to lead us in a prelude and I invite you during the prelude to wave whatever it is you've created for this morning. Neil, I'll turn it to you and we'll begin our worship together. Okay, so Joe, are we to turn, other than you and I, are we to turn video cameras off at this time? No, uh, we ask everyone to, if you could turn your video cameras off your, yourselves, that would be easier. Yes, that's what, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so if you're able to turn your video off, and as people are doing that, I just want to extend a very warm welcome to all of you, to everyone who might be watching on Facebook Live, as we come together for our Palm Sunday service with Parkminster United Church. We're so glad that you're here and that you're joining us this morning. And this is still new for us, but each and every week it feels a little bit more familiar and it's just a wonderful chance to be together in community. And we hope that you find a, a great sense of community and comfort and hope by gathering together this morning. Neil, of course, will be leading us in music and in hymns, and we're, we're really grateful for that. Um, and as we are singing together, the words for the hymns will appear on your screen, so you're more than welcome to sing along. Uh, we are going to keep mics muted, and again, nothing against your singing abilities, everybody. It just, it's much smoother on Zoom if we only hear Neil singing. Um, 
Other than that, I think Joe has some announcements for us for worship, and we'll move into our time of worship together. Yeah, just if you're maybe new to this and you haven't done so already, just invite you to turn your chat feature on. If you're on a laptop or a desktop, it's on the toolbar uh, at the bottom of your uh, of your screen. And if you have an announcement for today, please type announcement in your chat feature and we'll get to you in a moment, okay? So at the end of the service, feel free to, uh, to leave the meeting by simply clicking on the red leave meeting words. Uh, but Heather and I are gonna stick around for about half hour or so um, afterwards so that we can have a virtual coffee time together. Uh, so if you'd like to take part, feel free to stay on, maybe go grab a coffee, go grab a tea and, uh, and come on back. Uh, and as I said, we'll be using the chat feature um, to start. And depending on how many people, we might use video and audio uh, as well. So uh, just some uh, this past week, we started our Parkminster Connects uh, gathering. Um, they run from 11 to 12 weekly on Wednesdays via Zoom. Um, the link for that uh, was in the WhatsApp. Um, on on Friday, so check your WhatsApp if you would like to be a part of that gathering, and that's a, a chance for Parkminster folks to gather and to strengthen the bonds of community and uh, to be spiritually nurtured as well. We also had our first children's our family gathering via Zoom, and that's from one thirty to two on Wednesdays, and we had some fun, didn't we, Heather? We uh, we did. We loved the fun. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, we did a scavenger hunt together. That's right. We did a virtual scavenger hunt. great fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to see some of our families. Yeah. So uh, children and families are invited to join Heather and I for a time to be church and to connect with each other. And again, the link to that is also in your, okay. in your, what's, in your what's up. We also, Heather has also been doing uh, youth gatherings via Zoom on Friday evenings. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one this past Friday. There won't be one this coming Friday as it's Good Friday, but there will be one the following uh, Friday. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I don't see that anyone has typed announcement into the chat feature. Uh, so perhaps we're ready to, uh, to move on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'd like to uh, invite you um, to close your eyes <coughs> or to soften your gaze as we um, take part in a guided breath meditation to begin our worship service this morning. And as you do so, I invite you to take one breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. And let go of anything that you would like to release this day. Anything that would help you to be present for worship this morning. And again, one breath in. And out. And the second time, the breath in and out will be to place ourselves to carve this space out as being a time and a space for worship. And a final breath in and out. To open yourself up to be cared for and nurtured. To be in the presence of the Spirit, which is surely in this place.
Heart, we are connected by the Spirit. And so if you have a candle this morning as we light them, may we be bonded together as the body of Christ, living lights in our communities. And so at this time, if you're able, I invite you to light your candle at this time. And Joe, I have a visitor. <laughs> And so we welcome Luna into worship this morning. We sure do. She's going to be a bit of a fail for a minute. But why don't we go with a statement of welcome and she might be back. We'll see. In gratitude and with respect, we begin by recognizing the First Nations on whose traditional land we make our spiritual home, the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the neutral. We acknowledge with regret that this history has rarely been respectful. We commit to just relationship in the present. Along with First Nations everywhere, we recognize Earth as our mother upon whose water, air, and soil we depend for our lives and our well-being. In the midst of a climate crisis, we acknowledge that as a species, we have not acted with respect for our precious planet. We commit to learning and practicing better stewardship. Seeking true community, we welcome all who have no church home, need strength, and are seeking deep meaning. Welcome to those who have doubts or who do not believe. Welcome to those whose faith is sure and to those who believe but who are asking large questions. Welcome to visitors and to familiar friends. Welcome to grandparents, to mothers, fathers, youth and children, couples and single people. Welcome to people of all colors, gender identities, abilities, and sexual orientations. Welcome to each who is seeking an understanding of community and what it means to accompany one another. As we come together as church, we hold one another in gratitude and pray that we will be strong together, faithful together, and loving together. We seek blessing as we welcome the great gift of spirit in us, through us, and among us. Through pillar, court, and temple, 
the joyful anthems ring. To Jesus, who at last the neck was folded to his breast, the children sang their praises, the simplest and the best. From all events they Our scripture reading this morning comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to, to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and they put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Thanks be for these words of grace. Watch over us Watch over us My hands are tired My strength is gone Baby 
Mm. Well, thank you, Jamie and Neil and Angie. So many um, comments coming in of how people were touched by that music ministry this week. Well, that's one of the ways that our world has shifted how we share our worship. And another one is that um, that we're all we're all scared, and we're all scared by things that we never imagined uh, could make us fearful. Touching the bananas uh, in the grocery store or the neighbor coming your way on the narrow sidewalk that you share, touching the mail, a simple trip to the drugstore. Now for some of us, that fear, this new fear, is entwined with livelihoods. For some of us, simply going to work is now an act of courage. This week, uh, a nurse um, speaking to a Toronto Star columnist said, people perceive us to be heroes, but we're just like everybody else. We're struggling to get through the day and worried about what's to come. I didn't sign up to die on my job, she said. Behind every act of courage, there is fear. Otherwise, courage wouldn't be needed. The pandemic is our lens for just about everything these days. So it's, it's this nurse and workers like her that come to mind as I consider the story of Jesus's entry into Jerusalem. And I wonder about Jesus and his mindset because he knows what's to come. He's no fool. Jesus and his disciples, uh, working class folks, poor people, women, social outcasts, they're traveling around proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom, one where the sick are healed, the prisoners released, the oppressed set free, and where everyone has enough. And he knows that this, this message is a direct challenge to the empire and to those of his Jewish siblings who uphold its structures and authority. And I wonder what goes through his heart and his mind there in Bethpage. On the outskirts of Jerusalem, the political and religious heart of Israel I wonder what goes through his heart and mind before he sends for the donkey that will take him to the point of no return. And I wonder if he feels overwhelmed by the moment, if he feels completely inadequate. I wonder if in that moment he remembers that he's a carpenter's son from an out of the way heck town. I wonder if he thinks, who is he to parade into Jerusalem during Passover, the biggest event of the year? Who is he to thumb his nose at Caesar and the Jewish establishment? And I wonder if he feels much the same way as that nurse, struggling to get through the day, worried about what's to come, thrust into the moment by circumstances from which he cannot turn. For here is a truth, I think, that brings hope in the midst of empire, in the midst of poverty, in the midst of pandemic, love insists on being. Love insists on its manifestation in our lives and in our world. The ones among us who transform fear into hope are those who allow themselves to become channels 
through which love can flow, who allow love to take on their flesh. Love insists on being. It simply waits for the willing. 2,000 years ago, that love manifests itself as it parades defiantly into the heart of Jerusalem. And there's so much joy because when love emerges from under the smothering of fear and despair, there is hope, there is gratitude, and there is joy. And sometimes that joy is very simple. It's just a, a slight smile or a single tear. But sometimes it involves taking off your cloak and laying it on the ground or waving palms to proclaim that love is the true emperor. Love insists on being. It simply waits for the willing who defy fear and open the door for hope. Today, love marches defiantly into the employee entrances of hospitals, care homes, and grocery stores. Today, the cloaks and the palms are the banging of pots and pans, applause, singing, banners, flickering apartment building lights, sirens, tribute videos, honking horns. Love insists on being, and when it makes an appearance, the hope in our hearts flows outward in expressions of gratitude and joy. So friends, I want to invite you to use your chat feature and to share where you have seen love manifesting itself, love insisting on being, where you have seen love taking on flesh in the midst of this pandemic, Perhaps you've seen it on the news or it's a story you've heard about from someone else. Perhaps it involves you. And I invite you to share them now and Heather and I will read them out. So Heather, if you could turn your video uh, back on. Deb Sirtsma calls from friends. Friends calling to check in and see how we're doing. Last, oh, we've got more. I've spent more time with my brother. Heather? Seeing friends and chatting at a distance. Oh, sidewalk chalk. Yes, yes the messages and images from sidewalk chalk that people are doing as people are out for a walk my neighbors doing a live facebook live sing-along mm -hmm. uh kathy saying our son's girlfriend loretta who goes into work as a nurse on the covid floor in hamilton hospital mm -hmm. now joe i've got some facebook live ones someone is saying neighbors nancy's telling us neighbors checking in daily can you do some of the ones yeah. on our chat yeah. here yeah i have seen faith and trust in the hellos from all the people I pass on my daily walks, we used to pass by silently. Uh, from uh, That was from Sandy, from Fred. Uh, our neighbors and their children delivered muffins to the neighborhood, Pat and Fred. Mm -hmm. The most nonpartisan politics we've seen in a while, a Team Canada approach right now from Cedric and Amanda and Amelia. Mm. Um, the Hicknells, the Christmas lights hung in the shape of hearts from front windows playing games virtually with family that we can't hug. Mm -hmm. And I'm just scrolling down here. 
Karen, uh, Karen faithfully banging on her pots at 7.30 every evening. That's right. That's Karen right. Schertzberg doing that each night. Yeah. Uh, the Pease family are saying they're told of a, a story of the wife of a paramedic looking for eggs. She couldn't go out with her daughter, but places were sold out by the time her husband's shift was over. And so a worker from Shoppers not only put them aside for her, but delivered them and refused pay to thank her for the work her husband was doing. Mm -hmm. Um from Linda Bird, early childhood educators in my program who are providing care for emergency health care workers so that they can go to work every day. Mm -hmm. uh, from Lonnie uh, Kerbal, strangers thanking me for my work at a nursing home. Yeah. From Karen, we don't know which Karen, but te teddy bears in front windows joining Wendy from a distance, banging pots and ringing bells for my heroes. Heather? Uh, I'm going to Facebook Live. Nancy okay. again saying family doing cocktail hour across the country. And Judith saying wrapping our arms around ourselves from a distance to share a hug with the grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And Leo born sharing our local fire hall has chalked on their driveway. We have this. We are here for you. Mm -hmm. Nancy Dextra, my nephew showing up at my window asking for my grocery list. Uh, Scott and Wendy, how companies providing online services are working to Folks, are we still here? I got booted out, Joe. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened either. Okay, I, well, I've lost my chat, so I hope you were going. But um, also, Nancy on Facebook Live was saying, my friends are sewing masks and gowns. Yeah. Can you read some of the? Oh, some people, a lot of people got kicked out. Okay, yeah, sorry, everybody. We I'm, don't know. We don't know what happened. We're back. That's we're all we back. can do. We're back, though. I'll say yes. it was a Zoom thing and nothing we did. <laughs> yes. I don't think it was anything we did. But, no. Uh, oh, can I just say that Xander yes. wanted to share that they're writing chalk messages to his friends in their driveways and getting messages back. What a yes. great idea. Yeah. That's true, Neil. It's hard to keep a good church down. That's, That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for sharing your, um, oh, the Facebook feed was dropped. Um, okay, Joe, can you get that back going? And do you want me to do the prayer of gratitude while you do that? Sure. Okay. Well, thank you again, everybody, for sharing. And, and certainly feel free to share them if people can read them in the chat. But let, let's join together in a prayer of gratitude, uh, not only for being together, but for the many ways our time, talents, and treasures are shared in this time. So friends, even as we're not able to gather together in body, we know that gifts continue to be offered for the ministry of Jesus in this place. Gifts of time, talent, and treasure are being shared to offer leadership, to comfort the anxious, to remind us of our belovedness. So we continue to ask that all gifts might be blessed. Holy One loves wisdom, creation's source. Bless the gifts we offer that in anxious and fearful times, the world might see through our ministry that love lives, love prevails. We ask this from the holy mystery, from Jesus, the mystery in flesh, and from the spirit, the mystery among us, one God, mother of us all. Amen. So, Joe, how are we doing with getting back on Facebook Live? Uh, not well. Heather? Okay. <laughs> um, well, as we work on that, we are going to move into a time of prayer and sharing together. This, as always, is a week full of concern, but there are also joys and beauty that I'm sure you've noticed in the midst of it all. And so fingers crossed we won't get all kicked out again, but if you'd like to use your chat feature at this time to share any joys or concerns that you'd like to lift up today, uh, we'd be grateful to receive them and share with one another.
Ah, the rainbow that completely covered Grand River Hospital on Friday night. What a beautiful image. Uh, oh goodness, spring crocuses. Our extended family welcomed a new baby girl, Lucy. Oh, congratulations, Sandy and family. Pray for the frontline healthcare workers, police, firefighters. Jaden letting us know that my niece turns two tomorrow and Jaden's birthday is later this week. Birthday wishes to you both. Joe, I'm gonna get you to read the next ones because I'm just gonna let Facebook Live know we're working on it. Okay, um, my, yes, uh, for the first bouquet of flowers gathered from the garden um, from Bonnie. Uh, Beautiful sunsets from Kathleen and Rob, uh, Debbie, Mitig. Our ducks have returned to our backyard pond uh, as well. Heather? Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing two different things. The ability to get together on Zoom with three university friends who have not seen each other in 19 years. Yes. That's from Maureen Crawford. Francine says, the sunshine that allowed me to sit on my front porch and say hi. Oh gosh, it's jumping. Karen, give thanks for this video so I could see my grandson James taste his first solid food oatmeal. <laughs> awesome. You want to go, Joe? Yes, we are back live on Facebook as well. I just wanted to, we're thankful for that. <laughs> Yay! Uh, Scott and Wendy are thankful for the spring birds that are <laughs> arriving daily. The female grackles have arrived to join oh. the males. Linda Bird virtually watching my eight month old granddaughter eating lots of new foods. Quite a sensory experience. Shelly, a mutton, a joy, the sound of spring peepers and birds on our walks. Heather? Uh, Carolyn praying for, or that, I think that's me. Oh, I don't know who that is. Carolyn is saying, I pray for my friend Julie, who has coronavirus and mild pneumonia. Mm -hmm. Certainly prayers for her. Rob and Jill saying, hearing about all of the positive environmental impacts. Dolphins returning, cardinals. Mm -hmm. Joe, if you can go ahead, I'm just responding to Facebook Live. Okay, from Nancy Dykstra, uh, uh, Elena, a friend who is struggling at home in New York with COVID-19, yes. Do you have some? Yeah, no, I think because we're a little bit lagged on Facebook Live, I'm, I'm not gonna get those prayer requests maybe in time, but certainly Facebook Live, if you would like to share them, know that they're being read by us and we're certainly holding those joys and concerns in prayer. Shall we pray? Let's pray. Let us pray. Holy one, you come to meet us in humble ways. You meet us in the lengthening of the light. You meet us in the fragrance of the earth melting. You meet us in the delicate petals of the first yellow crocus blossom. You meet us in the first robin we see. This year especially, we will look for little signs of life, not passing them by, but stopping and giving thanks for your presence in the beauty of our world. Your holy presence is all around us. Thank you for this community of faith gathered to worship and for all the ways that draw us closer as a loving, supportive community, reaching out to those in need in this time of physical distancing. Thank you for showing us the joy of losing ourselves and finding your strength. We need strength this week to see beauty amidst pain and uncertainty, to be kind with each other even when we are tired and overwhelmed, and to give to our community even if we feel we have nothing to give. We come to you in humility because we are not a perfect people, but we know we are your beloved people, broken and beautiful. This year, our hosannas feel different. Our palm branches look different. Yet here yes, we, are. we are on the path to Holy Week as we march together to Jerusalem, through Gethsemane, and to the Hill of the Cross, we bring with us the concerns that are on our hearts this day. 
be with those who are anxious, who are ill, who are all alone. Those working the front lines of this pandemic, providing essential care and services. Be with those who have lost loved ones, those who will struggle to sing Alleluia later this week. Be with those who are facing job loss or reduced employment, and all who may be struggling in these difficult economic times. Be with those without a voice, that their voices may be freed to proclaim your praise. Help us to rest in the comforting truth that in life and in death, we belong to you. Give us strength, give us courage, give us hope for all that lies ahead. In this moment of silence, we meet you at our own crossroads. We feel your great tender love for us as we lift up the things that are upon our hearts and minds. Thank you that you don't just show us the way. You are the way and you empower us to follow you. We follow you together with hosannas in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so friends, we are on the cusp of Holy Week. So I invite us to begin in a time of preparation now as we ride with Jesus into Jerusalem. Crowds swelled with excitement, waiting for their newly anointed one is a temple of the heart. We open the gates for him to welcome our victor, this savior soldier, the warrior king who would save us from oppression and cruelty. The crowds shouted out, Hosanna, save us! those enemies that threaten to destroy us. Save us from ourselves. I cried out from the crowds that day. There's one voice in a sea of people, one among many scattered, one among many carpeted the ground with coats and palms, with hopes and dreams. There's something better in this world. To make of it what I will. I've placed all my passion upon this teacher master of bread and fishes, the deaf and blind, of miracles and spectacles, that he was on a donkey, not a noble steed, self-giving and brought down low, seeking to rescue the outsider to save us from our sins. Who was this? We questioned. following him on this inglorious triumphant road. They did not turn an ear to him. They made of their hearts a stone. Broke him over the rock. All their hope. 
I invite you, you'll see on your screen a, a prayer of preparation, and I invite you to join with me in reading it together. Let us pray. Holy One, even as we proclaim Hosanna, we know what awaits us at the end of the Lenten road. And yet love calls us forward and urges us to trek farther in faith. Travel with us as we go into some difficult places. Be with us as we see ourselves in this story as those who betray, deny, judge, and convict. Strengthen us for this week to come that we may also echo the words of Jesus, not my will, but thine be done. Just a word, everybody. Verse five is on a different part of my music, so please keep singing and I'll keep playing. <laughs> And so, friends, um, would you join with us in our responsive and commissioning and blessing? May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with us on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out our hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open our hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone we meet see the face of Christ in us. Amen. Friends, go in peace for the week ahead. <laughs>